Liz Appleby has a group that we've decided is quite possibly the cousin of Mass Mouth. She has a group called The Mouth. Amazing. Isn't it? And it is a group of... A monthly jolt for women. Storytelling. A monthly jolt of storytelling. Sounds like a drug ad. Pharma. Big Pharma. And me, yes. Wow, what a great topic. Work. Okay, so hi guys. Am I am I starting? Yeah, tell me I'll let me just time you if you need your Terrifying to be timed. I've never come in on time. Okay, let me, warning, I don't sound like I look, so big disclaimer. Okay. Work. Amazing topic. You know, Freud said love and work are the cornerstones of our identity. And really, I'd have to agree, not about love, because I don't have any, but about work. I mean, I go into my job, and it really is like a, an x-ray, I feel, of my mind. I teach English as a psychiatric language. <laughs> it's called a second language, but not when I'm done. And I go into a... It's a corporate setting, and these are scientists, and it's a very sober reality. And I go in, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm starting a new class. And we're going through our introductions, and it's fairly standard, and um, warning, politically incorrect, about to follow. And I love my students, and I love my job, and they love me, but here goes some un-PC stereotypes. So we're going around the room, and I say, tell us your name, where you're from, and the work you're doing. And these are scientists, and we start with you know, the Japanese who are exceedingly polite. And then we move into the French, and it is impossible. This American shorthand for my soul. <laughs> what is this impossible? And then it's the Italians, but there's just one. And of course, he's come on the wrong day, Giuseppe. And he's come on Wednesday instead of Tuesday because he's Wednesday, he's Tuesday. Nothing is fixed in Italy. A red light is a suggestion. È vero, veramente vero. And then we get to the Chinese. Have you tried to say any names? Are you Chinese American? Ho Jin Tao, Tatu. They're like throat positions. They are so hard. They're not names. They are such difficult calisthenics. And I've actually been told I have a good accent. It's so sad, I probably don't. But everybody, Hu Jin Tao. Not Hu Jin Tao. Ta Di Nin Chuan. So I'm wondering how the hell am I going to remember eight of these people? And we're going around. So I try to, you know, they're very, very. Um, sober and I say well tell me a little bit about you know your region and I find out that the food is a little bit tangy or spicy and they're they're quite sober and it starts getting a little bit livelier as they move into the topic of dumpling dumpling very important dumpling okay dumpling this course and it gets a little livelier and livelier and it's getting actually agitated and I'm wondering okay is this becoming like a culinary Tiananmen Square and I think, okay, just let them, let them. They don't have many chances for democracy. This is a chance for cooking as well as democracy. And it's starting to whip up a bit. And one guy stands up, and he is a bit of a Chinese Pinocchio. He's this big. I love him. But Da Ying. Jolene, I think we need to work on some pronunciation. It's not true. So. He's into the. He's a medical per school professor in China and very dignified. But as soon he becomes very dictatorial anyway. So I don't know if I'm coming in on time. Okay. So um, dumpling discourse and it's becoming a little bit frightening. And I think, all right, wait a minute, just chill. When I was in Italy, as an exchange student, you know, the first week I'm there, the host family is, you know, sitting there and they're saying, uh, mi scusi. Vorrei un po' di pasta, ma non è vero, è impossibile. I think, okay, so they're getting divorced. But they're not, they're just talking about the salt. So I think, you know, just relax, let these people have fair play. And it's getting more and more agitated. No one's listening, no one's listening, and it's only the first week. We have 15 weeks to go, and I realize the Japanese are like, that goes up, that goes up, they're moving out, and the Italian is even for me. 
is a bit disorganized. And, and the French, of course, are, it is impossible. So finally, I realize I've got to acknowledge this. I've got to acknowledge this. And I, I say, so, really politically correctly, do, um, do you have a chance to um, express your opinions often? Stop. Silence. They look at me. We are out of control. <laughs> We're out of control. I said, yeah, I kind of see that. You're a little out of control. Okay, and so at the end, I see that one of the Chinese people is saying, you are genius. And I think, yeah, I better be because I'm going to need a MacArthur Genius Grant to make it through the 15 weeks. And I go out into the hallway, and it's the gray, silent, padded carpets of corporate America with the human zippers who work there. And I think, I'm so glad that it's not English as a second language, but instead a psychiatric language, because English as a second language would be too dull. As a psychiatric language, it's a little bit unpredictable, a little bit idiosyncratic, a little bit quirky, a little bit me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. That's Liz Appleby. Wonderful.